All right, what's up YouTube? So I want to do a quick video showing you how to mod a transmitter. You can do this with any kind of transmitter. Uh, I'm using a WL Toys transmitter for the V666 or the V626. 262, sorry. I'm going to use that transmitter. And I'm going to basically show you guys how to mod it so that you can get extra range out of it. Because as it turns out, these antennas that they put on the top are completely fake. What's inside is this little... I can't really dig it out right now. What's inside is basically a little... Uh, antenna that's super short about that long it doesn't give you much range so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to mod that and uh, hopefully get some extra range out of this thing uh, some people can even quadruple their range depending on um, the uh, quadcopter so all right let's get to it and uh, see what we can do with this guy all right guys so here is the uh, transmitter first thing we're gonna do turn it over push right here we're gonna take out all the batteries make sure all the batteries are out Okay, so be careful when you're pulling this off because as you do, these buttons on the top here, they just are set in by molded plastic. So they'll actually fall out and so will the boards inside that you use with those buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it up right now. The uh, battery compartment has the wires right there you want to watch out for too. Okay, so now we have this thing apart. So here's your button that goes right in here. So you got two of them. They just sit there like that. So here's the other one here. All right. So when it comes to this Wi-Fi transmitter, this right here, this uh, first dot right here, this first uh, piece of solder, that's actually your transmitter. And the one right next to it to the right, this piece right here is actually going to be your, um, your ground. So you can't see it very well in this video, but this camera, um, but this, uh, this piece right here is actually shielded, and the ground's right there. And this is your transmitter piece at the very top. It has a very weak little antenna that we don't like, so we're going to try and increase the range on that. So before we start, let's talk about the things we're going to need to complete this project. The first thing is going to be a screwdriver, but one that's hopefully not this big. You're going to need one that's going to fit inside the transmitter. Probably one of those little Phillips head screwdriver ones that come with the uh, like eyeglass repair kits, okay? Next thing we're going to need is going to be solder. And you're going to need to be able to solder pretty well for this project because these are really small solder points. So you can pick up solder at Walmart um, for pretty cheap, a couple bucks, it's all you need. Uh, next thing you're going to need, because you have solder, is a soldering iron. So you're going to want a soldering iron, one that's pretty good. This is a cheap $7 one. You're probably going to want one that's a little fancier because this is going to be a pain in the butt to work with. I might even get a nice one myself for doing this project. All right. Next thing you're going to need is SMA connectors. Now there's a couple different types of SMA connectors you can get from Radio Shack. This one's a right angle. You can also get what's called a straight crimp on, um, which is basically a, a, just a flush one. This is what you're going to use if you're actually making your antenna. And then uh, this right here is going to be your SMA, your straight mount. And what this means is it's a receptacle that you can put your, uh, uh, your shielding and then your, um, your main transmitter wire through. And so it looks kind of like a circle with this uh, square thing on it. You can get these from Radio Shack too. They're about six bucks each. And then finally, I have right here another uh, male crimp on straight plug which I can also use for my antenna in case I or as a connector in case I need to extend the range even further so okay the next thing you're going to need is RG58 wire uh, coax cable and in this case I'm, I wasn't able to find straight uh, RG58 so I actually paid a little bit more just so that I could get uh, the, uh, the cable next thing you'll need is some wire cutters and you can also use these for stripping the wire, but I don't recommend it. Optionally, you can also get a pair of wire strippers. I'm personally not going to use just these. I'm going to use the strippers as well. Okay. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is just some straight old copper wire. I'm going to use this leftover copper wire because it's uh, still good inside, and I might as well recycle because I don't like throwing away things if I don't have to. So we'll use this for our cloverleaf antenna. Okay. So now that we've got our stuff, let's get started on actually making this thing happen. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and cut off the uh, ends of these, of this RG58 coax cable. This cable can be uh, kind of hard to find, that's why I suggest buying it online or actually getting it from an um, uh, eBay supplier. So we're going to want to cut this length to something that will fit inside the transmitter here. We want it to fit inside the transmitter. We want to run it from, let's see if I can get this in view. We want to run it from the connections here to just outside the receptacle. And I'm actually going to reuse this piece right here, which fits on the side here, I'm actually going to reuse that piece there to make this uh, happen a little easier so that I can actually put the SMA connector inside this thing. Okay? Okay, so I've now just drilled this out using a uh, 
Dremel, this is completely optional, but I just want to make sure this fits in here nice and easily. So I now made that swivel sit right there. So there's now my SMA connector, which can now fit inside of the uh, transmitter. Okay guys, so now I have finished um, soldering on this SMA connector. It doesn't look super pretty, but it's actually a pretty darn good job considering how hard it is to get these on. So you can see that I've isolated my, let's see if I get this in the view frame, my uh, center connector here, my center conductor. It's isolated now from my ground wire, which is now on the outside of this SMA connector. And so now we're going to go ahead and cut a length of this and we're going to go ahead and solder onto the board. Okay, so now that we have this antenna, or this uh, this piece all done, and we have it all soldered in, now I'm going to use this to hot glue gun it in. And just so we're clear, this is my uh, this is my wife's glue gun. It's it's not mine. I don't I don't do pink. So okay, all right. Okay, so now we have this all done. This is all hot glued in here. So there's our SMA connector hot glued in the base here just for some added protection. You don't have to use this. You can always use like super glue or you could just literally just wedge it in there, but I just chose to do that just for just in case. And now we're going to take this and then we're going to put the center wire on the left one and we're going to put the ground and we're going to start to the right one. And that's going to be it for this. And then we're done with this guy and then we can move on to building the antenna. So there's the cable right there soldered into the board right there. Hopefully you can see that from that close. Anyway, so that's all in. So now I'm going to go ahead and hot glue gun it down just to give some added stability and then it's time to make our antenna. Alright guys, so here we go. So now it's all, the SMA connector is now in. And we'll be able to use this for uh, screwing modified antennas on. And we'll also be able to use it for screwing into uh, repeaters if we want to do um, really, really long range, like if you want to use a tracker antenna or something. So now we'll go ahead and do the antenna and then we'll go ahead and take this thing out for a spin. Alright guys, so next up we're going to go ahead and make the uh, transmitter antenna for this build. Okay guys, so now I've gone ahead and cut my uh, wire lengths. So what I've done is, um, to make a cloverleaf antenna, you do one basically a figure eight loop kind of, and I'll show you that in a second. So that in order to do that, you're going to use a wire, copper wire, that is 9.87 inches in length, also about 250 millimeters. And this one here is going to be 4.93 inches in length. So you're going to need two of that. This is going to be a three, it's going to be a three clover leaf antenna. So this is going to make up two clovers right here. And this one's going to make up the final clover and they're all going to be joined together in the center. I'll show you how we're going to do that. I also went ahead and just cut a length of this coax and this will be what sticks out from the uh, transmitter. This is what's going to screw, this is the antenna part that's going to screw in to the uh, transmitter and then your clover leaves are going to be right here on top looped around. So. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bend these, and I'll show you how to bend them in a second, and how I bend them, and then we'll uh, get back to it. For these, um, you're going to do one and a quarter, one and a quarter measuring from the end. Your arcs are going to be two times one and a quarter, right here, the, both these arcs, and the middle one will also be two times one and a quarter, which is these ones here. So you have one and two, uh, you have basically one and a quarter inch, um, two and a half inches, two and a half inches, two and a half inches, and then finally uh, one and a quarter inches. That's simple. For this one, same thing, one and a quarter inches, one and a quarter inches, and then whatever's left over here, we don't worry about. Um, it comes out to roughly the same thing. So um, so that's it for that. So now that we have these bent, we can go ahead and bend the clover leaf into the final design, and then we can go ahead and start our um, soldering together. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, connector on the end of this so we're ready for our antenna. Okay guys, so we have the clover leaf antenna done. So it's gonna go just like that. And then um, I've gone ahead and put the SMA connector onto the RG58, which will be on the other end of this. And um, let me just show you guys how this works. This is called a circular antenna, which means that um, each of these clover leaves, one side attaches to the um, shielding, the other side attaches to the actual transmitter. Because this is a double clover leaf, both these two, both the ends of these two over here um, are going to attach to the transmitter and this one in the middle is going to attach to the uh, shielding. It's going to basically do the exact same thing. Same thing with this. We're going to basically do um, uh, this one right here will be attached to the shielding and then these three, so it'll go like that, and then these three up top are going to attach to the transmitter. So there's a loop. So one goes to the shielding, which will be these bottom three, one, two, three, goes to the shielding, and the top three, one, two, three are gonna to go to the transmitter. 
Okay guys, so I finally went ahead and soldered these clover leaves on and you can see that's all finished now. So we got one, two, three connections up here and then one, two, three connections down here on the shielding. It doesn't look that pretty and it was really hard to do. Heads up, unless you have a really good soldering iron. This took me uh, probably the better part of like hour and a half hour to do, to be honest. So it takes a lot of time, but this is all done. And now it screws right into here and then there's our end result, antenna. All right, so now we've done that part. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and mod the antenna on the on the um, uh, receiving end for the quad. All right, guys, same story with this one. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect this antenna right here. Is gonna be the transmitter part, and then here's what's gonna go to the shielding, and we're gonna put back on the same type of wire that we used in the other one. We're gonna put on this right here, hooked up to there. And I'll show you guys how we're gonna do this antenna in just a second. All right. Okay, so I've gone ahead and made the dipole antenna. It's just the coax, and then what I've done is you have your uh, ground here, your shielding, and then your transmitter right there, and that will attach to this right here, just like that. So transmitter on the right, shielding on the left. And then to make this antenna, oops, let's not drop that. To make this antenna, it's really easy. You just bend out the transmitter part in the center to the right 90 degrees, and then you wrap another piece around the shielding on the other side. Just make sure they don't cross, so you're not getting any, uh, um, so you're not getting any uh, faults in your, in your, I guess your transmitter and ground. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this thing on. All right, guys. So now we have the uh, antenna soldered on, the dipole sticking up like it should, because it should be in an upward orientation. And now I'm gonna just cut this off, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a whole bunch of hot glue on both these things, and then we are all done with our transmitter. We can go ahead and go out and test it. All right. 